in Premier League. But yeah, really well. And I think a lot of people are expecting him to make it out of the first round, but I think it is going to be a really big challenge. So It is. It, it always is. There is no easy matchups in WCS Premier League. It's just, uh, you know, some of them are maybe okay, and then it could be a lot worse if you have guys like, I want to say Jadong and Bomber in your group, but even if you are a Jadong or a Bomber, you're not guaranteed to make it out of WCS America. Either way, welcome to our second series of the day. IG's Zigua is a Chinese Zerg spawning on the right top side of Habitation Station. A Zerg that's been around for a long time has been, uh, you know, making some noise. Back then had that really good run at the World Cyber Games. Feels like ages ago. He's been around ever since. But uh, you would say that he's been sort of surpassed by his fellow countrymen uh, like Jim mm. and Maxet, just having some more international success. However, Zigua is still one of the absolute best Zergs in uh, China, and I'm pretty sure that he will be that for a long time. He's really looking for a pop culture reference there. A pop yeah. culture reference? Yeah, international love. <laughs> Chris Brown? <laughs> is that what it is? Pitbull? I don't actually know. Yeah. yeah. Hey. I just hey. listen to the radio, man. I don't, I don't actually look up the songs. Well, it's an okay song, but it's no Drake. Yeah, no Drake. <laughs> I'm the biggest Drake fan in the world. Yeah. Yeah, I love Drake. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, over here on the left-top side of the map, Representing Team Evil Geniuses, he's our uh, very own EG's Hawk, also known as Chris Loranger. <laughs> so it's appropriate. It is Canada. Many people there speak French. Well, <laughs> we can call him a Loranger, but I don't think that's very accurate. Loranger sounds better. Hatch first over here on the right side of the map for Jigwa, showing us that he's not afraid to play the greedy game over here. Yeah, we've. I mean, we've been seeing a lot of these builds actually. I'm still torn which ZVP build I want to refine the most first. Ones with hatches first, or ones with not. They really develop into um, a much different type of later game on when you take your gas timings and such. But Sigua does opt to go for the spawning pool before anything else after that hatch. Um, sometimes you see players take a quicker gas. It gives you a lot of map control. And it's not uncommon to see from Sigua. You know, he loves his zerglings early. That's if there's any like defining characteristic I'd say about Shigua and his ZVP. It's, this guy just loves links, and he can do a lot with mm -hmm. them. Yeah, so. a good point there. If you don't watch... Well, and Hawk is going a little crazy over here as well. He drops the Nexus at the gold base, and this is something that uh, is becoming a little more popular. I have tried to pull it off. I failed. I doubt I died against just like Roaches and links and whatnot. Shigua is overlorded, heading into the right direction. Yep. I am super, super eager to just watch this game right now from a, a <laughs> fan point of view. I want to see how Huck is going to pull it off. I know that some Protoss players have been trying to pull this off. I know it has worked even in a couple of high-profile matches. You know, you get a pylon, you drop two gateways, and then uh, a Zealot will keep you safe. And then often you see them drop a Stargate because, hey, you know, if it's just Roaches and Lynx, if you can get one Void Ray out, uh, Void Ray will take care of the Roaches and yep. Gateway units should take care of the Zerglings. So I guess that is what Huck is going to do as well. I really wonder how he's going to execute this build though. This already excites me. And I, I kind of hope it works so I can try to copy it because I have like a 40% win record on this map. And that should be better. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder what it is in CVP for you. Um, I, I so I actually, I, I watched some games from Shigua, and his reaction to uh, this very exact same opening um, was that he made a bunch of slowlings and actually pressured in, and I'm anxious mm. to see. I see two on the way right now. Is he going to follow up with more? I kind of expect that he will, but he sees the Mothership core there. He hasn't started anything quite yet, and four and a drone. Okay, so it seems like he's just going to take map control, but overall wants to just power up. I really want to, like, this does, of course, set Huck up for a lot of different things. The timings are going to be very different because the income is, is, is so bizarre right now. Protoss is going to mine way more than they normally do in this phase in the game. <laughs> Who could have ever thought we would say the day, uh, we would see the day in StarCraft 2 where Protoss players would be returning the favor to those other races taking the golds all the time <laughs> against us yeah. defensive Protoss players. And Suddenly now, I'm back in Metropolis. Yeah. And now it's, now it's our time to be greedy. <laughs> Three gateways going down uh, in total for Hawk. No, actually, that already makes it up to five gates. Of course, like, I, I can't blame him for that. This is probably what I would do. There is still no extractor down for Jigawa as well. This is something we know. This is not something that Hawk necessarily knows. But, okay, no, never mind. There is an extractor here. Yeah, I'm crazy. Sorry. Yeah. I saw like gas going on. But still, though, that's kind of late. No zergling speed. We do see roaches in production. Yep. That's the reaction you need. I mean, so many minerals here for Shigawa on all five gates. He can make a lot of zealots. And ideally, Shigawa's going to get... Uh, gonna want to get more creep spread now into the low ground. He has a tumor actually that's sitting there ready to go. There's plenty of creep spread. 
Pretty sure it's right. Yeah, uh, it's has sent. not scouted this third base yet. I guess he kind of assumes that it's there. Uh, he does have a pilot in a good position already, and I've seen Hawk do some cool stuff here. Uh, with Pinus all around Habitation Station where he just keeps wiping in sentries and keeps, you know, using these ramps, using the terrain of Habitation Station to force field units out. Hmm, if I, if I was Jigo, I'd be a little worried now. Yes, he will have roaches, but will he have enough roaches? I actually don't think so. Yeah, I think he anticipated this pressure, made 14 links, though that's also just Jigo's style, make a bunch of links early on. The Queen might get sniped here. It's like, yeah, that queen's going to go down, but Roaches will be spawning now. I think he'll be able to save this third, in all honesty, but he's going to lose a lot of drones. He's already lost a queen, definitely taking some damage. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to save the third. Uh, it's going to be like five, six, seven, seven. I mean, Huck should start working on his hatchery, I think, as his sentry right now is going to take damage. A few Roaches will hatch, but they will hatch one by one. Hmm, I feel oh. Huck is giving Jigua the time here that Jigua needs to get more and more units out. One of the things, though, that Huck's doing really well is sniping a lot of these queens. Shikwa has only started one replacement, and he's been missing every inject. So if Huck follows up into a really big pressure here, I could see Shikwa getting into a lot of trouble because he doesn't have a unit production right now and no Evo chambers, so maybe he's going to start pulling some money in a sec. But the Mothership Core does go down, which is a small win for Shikwa here. Yep, and uh, there are pl uh, pl uh, ben plenty of roaches out right now to push these stalkers back as well. <laughs> Shikwa's drones were all the way in the right bottom side of the map. So this hatch lives. Jigua is still on three bases. Uh, this was okay for Hawk. I have a really hard time reading this game right now because I have not casted a whole lot of games like this. Mm. Of course, Layer is extremely late for Jigua and Hawk still has that gold base. Ooh, these Zealots will not be able to achieve all that much. But let's not forget, a Protoss that was just on five gates for the longest time, just now the robotics facility is being wiped in. Uh, also losing his Monastery Core, losing a few gas intensive units. Uh, was that good enough? Yeah, uh, it's, it's. I completely agree, Kevin. Like. What I was a little surprised by, although it it is a really like big commitment, I was maybe expecting some more gateways here from Huck because he killed so many queens. And following up with a big wave of units, well, in the long run, Shikwa didn't have, he lost a lot of drones, so he doesn't have the, the massive economy. In fact, he's only just now replenished to a couple above, um, a, a few above Huck. Mm -hmm. But we'll have to see. Now Huck's opting to go for the Immortals, and Shigua has been able to start those upgrades. So he's got 1-1 one, one on the way. Yeah, he has double Evo on the way. He's going to be able to trap a few Zealots over here as well on the right bottom side of the map. These Zealots do not have plus one just yet. They uh, would have it in the future, but it doesn't really matter. With those Roaches, they would be cleaned up regardless. So Hawk is most likely will just going to follow this up with an Immortal Sentry push. Uh, this is a good map for it as well. Uh, how many Roaches will we have? Actually, I think Hawk should just go real soon, like drop yep. a few pylons. Go for it. Hydra then in production now, but, or it's like morphing in, I should say. But I don't think that Hydra's will be in time. I still like Hawk's position. I think he will be able to follow this up with a strong push. And uh, Jigua still with drones on the production tab. I think he overdid it a little bit, Kibble. 70 drones against uh, 46 Pro Protos on such a small map. Uh, he's going to try to counter, which is a pretty cool move, but there is a good cannon over here as well. Yeah, Roddy. I agree, man. I mean, he doesn't have uh, Glue Reconstitution. He doesn't have 1-1. He's making a couple roaches now, but spine crawlers are just going down. Shigo is going to see this pressure, and what's he going to do about it? There's no hydras, as he said. He starts groove spines. Those are not. Those are the types of things he needs for a long game, and this game is not going to be long for this world. Uh, when you already lose three, four, five roaches before you even uh, start stretching these immortals, you know that you're in trouble. Huck positioning himself very well. It's going to be very easy for him to land good force use on either that ram to the main base or on the one from the natural, or just do it both because, hey, we are protos, we can do that. <laughs> great attack here by Hawk, great follow-up, and uh, this should sort of seal the deal for him. A lot of roaches are on the production tab, but I don't think that Jigoa will ever be able to stabilize. Yeah, the counter-attack damage at the uh, gold expansion gets nothing done. Nice force fields from Hawk. He even keeps the Immortal alive. And now he sniped this natural expansion, and he has no reason to even pull out. There it is. GG. Shigua is going to drop game number one as Hawk stomps over him. Really, really um, solid follow-up there from Hawk. Yeah, cool cool build here by Hawk. I like it when Protoss players get fancy and just take that gold base early on. Uh, I felt Shigua just like he played a little too greedy as follow-up. Yes, he did a good job in stabilizing and he didn't really lose that many drones. He did, of course, make a lot of units and it does slow Zerg down a little bit in that phase in the game. But... You know, if he would start building units at 60 drones instead of 70, it's already a little different. Maybe then he's actually able to slow down that push. Um, as nice as Hydra's are, I also think it would have been better for him to just go absolutely crazy on the roaches and set up maybe, try to get a beautiful surround. Hawk had a few sentries, but it was not like this never-ending uh, sentry army where, you're, okay, we're going to see like 
44 force fields go down or something like that. He had quite a few force fields, 